Bonjour, je vous remercie à la presse et à toutes les députés des trois groupes politiques de Tessy et aussi à France-Palestine qui est aussi présente et aux délégués de la UNRWA. La situation à Gaza, à Cisjordanie et au Liban est si grave que nous sommes députés des trois groupes politiques et nous venons dénoncer, dénoncer le génocide et aussi un appel pour la paix. First of all, I would like to thank the press and all the members of the three political groups for, to, for being here and also to France, Palestine, Palestine and, and UNRWA. The situation in Gaza, the West Bank and Lebanon is so serious and tragic that we are here to convene for a plural, collective and a strong message to denounce the genocide. We are maps from three political groups. And now in Spanish, and I finish. Quiero dar las gracias a todos los diputados y diputadas de todos los grupos políticos, de tres grupos políticos de esta Cámara, que hoy han venido a esta llamada colectiva por la paz, contra la apartheid, contra la ocupación y, sobre todo, denunciando el genocidio en Gaza. Nosotros pedimos un alto al fuego, sanciones contra Israel y también que se rompa el acuerdo de asociación. Pero para eso queremos dar un mensaje colectivo, un mensaje plural, y por eso empezaremos por eh, Lynn Boylan, Presidenta de la Delegación de Palestina. Lim, you have the floor, please. Thank, thank you, Anna and uh, Dee Eva Karja. Uh, I think we all know now we're one year into a uh, genocide in Gaza and the escalating violence in the West Bank. Uh, the response from the EU and from Western governments to date has been shameful. Um, we continue to have preferential trading with Israel and arms supplies continue to flow while, they, while Israel is subject to the provisional measures by the ICJ under the Genocide Convention. In July, the ICJ advisory opinion also held that the occupation of Palestine is illegal and that states are under an obligation to not pursue trade or to do any other policies that would entrench that uh, occupation. So I suppose the question today is that the EU now faces a real credibility issue. They are uh, at risk and already have lost reputation among both the Global South and other Arab countries for their double standards when it comes to their approach to Ukraine uh, versus Palestine. Commission President Ursula von der Leyen has rightly condemned the bombing of Mariupol Hospital in Ukraine. She called it a war crime, rightly so. Yet Israel has repeatedly bombed and destroyed hospitals and medical centres. 19 of the 36 hospitals are, are out of service in Gaza. The other 17 remaining are only partially functional. So the EU, as, we, as we've seen, has been swift to introduce sanctions against Russia, yet Israel continues to act with impunity. There is an arms embargo and a, pro a prohibition on the export of dual-use products to Russia and a ban on the use of airspace. And meanwhile, arms exports to Israel have risen since the genocide began. In my own country, Ireland, uh, Irish airspace has been used as recently as yesterday uh, to fly nine tonnes of munitions to Israel. This this is at the same time that the Israeli Defence Forces are threatening and intimidating Irish peacekeepers in Lebanon. Uh, Ireland is allowing those carriers to travel through air airspace uh, to arm that same uh, IDF. So the EU strength is in our collective commitment to international law and to human rights. And as MEPs, I think we have a responsibility to ensure that the EU institutions and the member states use every tool and resource available to secure a permanent ceasefire, an end to the occupation and the growing annexation of Palestine and to uphold international law. No double standards. All we're asking is that the law be upheld, that the ICJ uh, decisions be uh, accepted and recognised. So, Sirshid on Palestine. Now we have the floor, Machak Nemec from the SND. Thank you so much. Microphone. Sorry, today we stand before you as a MEPs uh, from different political groups, often with uh, different uh, political views, standing as uh, Europeans united in a project that our predecessors uh, saw as the only possible solution for lasting peace after World War II, and I fully stand by that. Above all, the journalists, their colleagues, um, we stand united in the belief that what is happening in the Middle East, in Gaza, in West Bank, in Lebanon, Syria, Yemen, Iran, and Israel, is one of the greatest tragedies of our generation. The international order 
international law and institutions are crumbling. Thousands of uh, innocent lives have been lost along with a sense of humanity. UNRWA, a lifeline for millions of Palestinian refugees, is being instrumentalized sorry, by the right, constantly attacked and undermined. All of this is happening right now and right in front of our eyes, which gives us even greater responsibility as politicians and as an international community to take action. Israel leadership is opening new fronts without consequences, threatening Lebanon with devastation similar to we are witnessing in Gaza. This has to stop. Europe and the US must stop sending arms to Israel. Our weapons are killing innocent people. We need to suspend the association agreement. We need to tra ban trade with the settlements, sanction extremists, including those in the Israeli government. So we need a permanent ceasefire on all fronts, and we have to do it now. Thank you. Rima Hassan uh, from the left. Merci. Uh, bonjour à toutes et à tous. Je pèse mes mots quand je dis que nous avons une responsabilité immense sur les cinq années à venir et sur les mandats qui sont les nôtres. Au regard bien sûr de l'actualité internationale, mais au regard aussi des décisions qui sont rendues par les instances internationales. Les résolutions de l'ONU, les décisions de la Cour internationale de justice, les avis qui sont rendus sur la colonisation et l'occupation nous engagent, nous, députés européens, et en ce sens également les États européens et l'Union européenne. Il y a une bascule qui s'opère à la fois dans l'opinion, mais également dans les sphères politiques. Et c'est en cela que nous avons aussi une responsabilité. Israël a perdu, je crois, la plus, la plus importante des batailles, qui est la bataille de l'opinion. Et pour cause, les crimes qui sont recensés et qui sont documentés sont les crimes les plus graves. Le crime de colonisation, de l'occupation, du génocide et également celui de l'apartheid qui n'est pas assez traité et dénoncé ici. Je veux terminer par dire et redire que ce sujet n'est pas un sujet lointain de politique étrangère de l'UE, c'est un sujet européen, à la fois sur les dimensions historiques, mais les liens que nous avons avec Israël, l'impunité qu'on que, que, qu confère à Israël, le silence qui est celui des puissances occidentales, sont autant d'éléments qui nous rendent aujourd'hui complices des crimes qui sont commis par Israël. Et en ce sens, nous devons mobiliser tous les leviers européens pour avancer sur une quête de justice. Merci. Merci beaucoup. Uh, now, Gordon Bosanac from the Green CIFA Group. Thank you, Miranda. Thank you all. Uh, with this conflict, we have came actually now to the one of the unbearable civilization points when it's really impossible anymore to see and to watch what is happening on the ground. And we have been also clearly hearing the voices from Israeli government, which is constantly saying we just don't care. We don't care about the... Uh, opinions of the international law, on the national courts. We don't care on the opinion of even us, maps of condemning this war. But we should not ever, ever stop condemning this war. And also, I would like to stress one point which I find crucial for the maybe soon end of this civilization's shame. And this is that the words my colleagues and I myself are saying are he here are also the words which we are hearing from Israeli citizens. So it is not that Israeli state is equal as all their citizens. We are hearing the resistance within Israeli community saying against this war. And they think that also we should get more attention, more support to those Israelis who are understanding what is going on and who are not, and who are not can agree with the policy of their government. And I will say one more sentence as well. I'm also hearing the voices of Palestinians who are condemning the extremism of Hamas. So there are people on both sides who are the guarantees that this conflict can be ended, not maybe very soon, but we are here to support them as much as we can. And now Cecilia Strada from the S&D. Grazie, buongiorno a tutte e tutti. Eh, non ripeterò quello che dicono i colleghi, ma vorrei sottolineare un punto, avendo fatto l'operatrice umanitaria tutta la mia vita, quando parliamo di morti e feriti eh, a Gaza, in Palestina, nella Cisgiordania, eh, chi non conosce la guerra pensa che ferito sia qualcosa che passerà, chi conosce la guerra sa che queste ferite non passeranno mai più. Secondo l'Organizzazione Mondiale della Sanità, almeno un quarto delle centinaia di migliaia di feriti 
hanno subito mutilazioni gravissime che richiederanno riabilitazione tutta la loro vita. Questo è un punto molto importante. Anche se la guerra finisse in questo momento, decine di migliaia di persone continueranno a morire per la mancanza di cure mediche perché gli ospedali sono stati bombardati, continueranno a morire per gli effetti, per l'indotto della guerra. Dobbiamo fermarla subito. E non è soltanto in gioco la sopravvivenza della popolazione palestinese, è in gioco anche la sopravvivenza del sistema delle Nazioni Unite che sta subendo da parte del governo di Netanyahu degli attacchi senza precedenti le agenzie delle Nazioni Unite, lo stesso segretario generale, tutto il sistema ONU è in crisi e la nostra credibilità internazionale. Non possiamo più accettare un doppio standard. Con quale faccia ci opponiamo ai crimini di guerra commessi da Putin se poi stiamo zitti e non riusciamo a fermare i crimini di guerra commessi dal governo Netanyahu? E per questo ribadisco, noi chiediamo di sospendere l'accordo di cooperazione con Israele, chiediamo sanzioni, chiediamo anche di ripagare i danni e dobbiamo farlo ora, ne va in gioco la nostra stessa sopravvivenza, non soltanto quella della popolazione palestinese. Grazie. Grazie mille a Nauf, uh, by alphabetic order, uh, we began with the other maps. Uh, first, Jauma Sanz. Sanz, perdono. <laughs> no, Jauma, Jauma. It's for alphabetic order. Non sapeva che dovevamo intervenire, però molto brevemente, solo per... Para reforzar una idea. A veces se dice que Europa mira a otro lado, que no hace nada. Y no es cierto. Europa hace. Hace mucho. Europa tiene las manos manchadas de sangre. Europa es eh, cómplice de un genocidio, porque efectivamente Netanyahu no podría hacer lo que está haciendo sin la ayuda financiera, política y militar de Estados Unidos pero también de Europa. Por tanto, cuando a veces se eh, dice que Europa tiene que hacer algo, lo primero, que, lo primero que tiene que hacer Europa es dejar de hacer, porque de momento eh, Europa, como digo, tiene las manos manchadas de sangre. Fernando Barrena. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, dear friends, very shortly, I'm not going to be reiterative. The invasion of Palestine and Lebanon by Israel is fully and compliant on the, of the international law, and the European Union has to take action to put as much, uh, as much uh, pressure, as much pressure as possible on Israel to make them bring the genocide to, to an end. It's time for the European Union to discontinue the association agreement with uh, Israel until the massacre stops and advocate for a comprehensive uh, political deal to the conflict because Nothing, uh, nothing began on the 7th of October uh, last year. Thanks so much. Per Clausen. Every time an F-35 fighter jet is dropping a bomb or gas, it is most likely to be equipped with companies from my country, Denmark. The Danish government has refused to stop the sale of these crucial components in doing so, it's very clear that Denmark violates international rules of arms trade and is becoming complicit in the terrible war crimes happening in Gaza. Unfortunately, Denmark is not alone. Several EU member states have continued to arm Israel after the 7th of October. EU and its member states have turned a blind eye to international law and as a consequence, Thousands of innocent people have been killed. EU must do everything possible to put an end to the terrible war crimes happening in Gaza and to decades of systematic human rights violations against Palestinians. It's a, therefore, it's therefore crucial that EU bans arms sales to Israel. Actually, EU has, to legal, has a legal obligation to do so. We must not Let, it, let down the people of Palestine. Estrella Galán. En medio de este genocidio estamos viendo cómo se quiere pisotear el derecho internacional y además se quiere cambiar el sentido de la realidad, el sentido de la verdad. Estamos viendo cómo se quiere convertir en victimarios a quienes son víctimas, a la población civil que está aguantando y soportando estos crímenes de guerra. El mejor ejemplo de estos cambios es precisamente el tratamiento que se está dando a la UNRWA. 
es una agencia humanitaria fundamental para la supervivencia del pueblo palestino a quien se está criminalizando y acusando de terrorismo. Hasta el momento, más de 225 trabajadores y trabajadoras han sido cruelmente asesinados. Trabajadores que estaban dejándose la vida valientemente para salvar al pueblo palestino, para educar a niños y niñas, para acercar la poca ayuda humanitaria que llega a la franja de Gaza. ¿Hasta dónde vamos a dejar a este asesino de guerra llegar para que esta situación siga siendo apoyada por la Unión Europea y por el resto del planeta? Este señor, Netanyahu, Quiere acabar con el pueblo palestino y ve en la UNRUA una amenaza directa declarándola organización criminal. Aquí, desde el Parlamento Europeo, todo este conjunto de eurodiputadas y eurodiputados decimos alto y claro que la UNRUA es una agencia necesaria y que tenemos que seguir apoyando su ayuda y todo el soporte económico que sea necesario. ¿Nos podemos imaginar cómo sería en estos momentos la vida en la franja de Gaza si no estuvieran ellas y ellos dejándose la vida? Sin agua potable, sin alimentos, sin electricidad. Realmente es muy triste ver cómo eh, estamos permitiendo que Netanyahu avance en ese discurso. Es inaceptable y desde aquí trasladamos todo nuestro apoyo y toda nuestra solidaridad a las trabajadoras y trabajadores de la UNRUA, esos compañeros y compañeras que valientemente tienen una apuesta y una firme convicción de que el pueblo palestino tiene que ser libre. We welcome the UNRUA that uh, Mateo is arriving now. So, Hannah Jodin. World leaders are failing. The atrocities that we are witnessing in Gaza the genocide must be stopped. Allowing Israel to continue will not only result in many more casualties, it is also completely eroding the perception of international law. If it is okay for Netanyahu's terror state to commit crimes against humanity and genocide, then why should any other state bother to abide by international rules? What we are witnessing are flagrant double standards from EU countries. Let me give you one example from my own country. While evacuating wounded Ukrainians to Sweden, giving them treatments, the Swedish government has denied evacuating wounded and sick Palestinians. This is hypocrisy. This is racism. Finally, I would like to address all those around the world that take to the streets to show humanity with the victims and push for an end to the genocide. Please continue. Don't stay silent. Don't stay at home. In parliaments, at the workplaces, on the streets, at universities across the world, don't back down. We won't stop until Palestine is free. Vice Marza. Gracias. Eh, además de añadirme a todo lo que ya han dicho mis compañeras y compañeros, quiero dar las gracias a Ana Miranda por haber organizado este acto que nos reconcilia, a mí al menos, con la capacidad de unión en una cuestión tan importante como es eh, parar de una vez por todas el genocidio en Palestina. Miren, eh, yo soy maestro, fui consejero de Educación. Cuando estuve en el Gobierno valenciano tuvimos una relación de cooperación con maestros y maestras de Palestina. Algunas de ellas ya no están, fueron asesinadas. Otras tuvieron tiempo de, de huir y de refugiarse antes. Y algunas no sabemos nada de ellas. Quiero mandar un mensaje a aquellas personas que todavía tienen dudas. ¿Qué vamos a hacer si no protegemos a nuestras maestras y nuestros maestros? A los maestros y las maestras palestinas. A la gente que lucha por educar a nuestros niños y nuestras niñas, que son los palestinos también. A los niños y a las niñas, que se las han cortado no solo sus vidas, sino que su capacidad de mejorar en su vida, mía de la educación. No podemos permitir esto. Si a alguien no le revuelve por dentro esto, ¿en qué mundo vivimos? ¿Qué vamos a hacer aquí si no nosotros nos juntamos para decirle claro y raso al conjunto de la ciudadanía europea que hay que parar ya, que hay que hacer una actuación conjunta y no hay que hacer cosas tan distintas como lo que ya estamos haciendo? Ya se ha hecho. Por ejemplo, con programas de cooperación para las universidades de Ucrania no se está haciendo 
para la cooperación con universidades de, de Palestina. No se está haciendo con los maestros y las maestras de Palestina. No se está haciendo con los niños de Palestina. Y por eso yo quería hoy aquí decir y lanzar ese mensaje. Vayamos también ahí. Hagamos el alto fuego, paremos la cooperación, rompamos los eh, acuerdos de colaboración con Israel y también pongamos el foco con los niños y las niñas, la educación y la cultura que nos hace libres y que para ellos ahora mismo no la ven porque aquí no estamos actuando. Gracias. Irene Montero. Bueno, gracias Ana, eh, gracias a todos y todas las colegas que estamos hoy aquí, pero sobre todo a Ana por, por organizar eh, esta rueda de prensa. Se cumple, como saben, un año del genocidio que se suma a décadas de violencia, de vulneración sistemática de los derechos humanos del pueblo palestino por parte del Estado terrorista de Israel y también de una ocupación ilegal de los territorios palestinos que persiste hoy en día. Esta ofensiva genocida que se inició hace un año acumula ya más de 42.000 personas asesinadas, miles de personas heridas, miles de personas desaparecidas, la destrucción de la práctica totalidad de las infraestructuras, de las viviendas, de más del 85% de las escuelas, el desplazamiento forzoso de más del 80% de la, de la población y el asedio a la Franja de Gaza, impidiendo la entrada de comida, la entrada de agua, la entrada de medicinas, de ayuda humanitaria, el bombardeo de hospitales, el bombardeo de campos de refugiados y de otras zonas de refugio. Y todo esto está ocurriendo a ojos de todo el mundo. Nadie podrá decir que no lo sabía. Y como han dicho algunos de mis compañeros, Europa y Estados Unidos podrían parar a Israel al Estado genocida de Israel y a Netanyahu practicando un embargo total de armas y suspendiendo todos los acuerdos comerciales con Israel. Pero la élite europea y Estados Unidos están siendo cómplices del genocidio y están dando apoyo a este genocidio, un apoyo que es militar. Muchos países europeos, España entre ellos, sin que el gobierno del Partido Socialista haga nada, son países que son países de tránsito de armas para las armas que Israel usa para terminar asesinando a la población civil en Palestina y es un apoyo que también es comercial con ese acuerdo de asociación que exigimos romper y es un apoyo que es también político. Esta misma semana la presidenta de este Parlamento, Roberta Metzola, justificaba el genocidio en el supuesto derecho de Israel a defenderse que es uno de los elementos más crueles e insoportables de la propaganda de guerra sionista del Estado genocida de Israel. Por tanto, hay que parar el genocidio. Creo que la ciudadanía europea tiene una responsabilidad, las demócratas del mundo tenemos una responsabilidad, que es movilizarnos y hacer presión a la élite europea para que respondan por apoyar el genocidio y, sobre todo, para que hagan lo que hay que hacer, que es romper ese acuerdo de asociación y practicar un embargo total de armas para pararle los pies al genocida Netanyahu y a todos sus ministros que están siendo los responsables directos del genocidio del pueblo palestino. Que viva Palestina libre. Yo, Oliveira. La mensaje que queremos dejar es clara y es dirigida a las instituciones de la Unión Europea às organizações internacionais multilaterais e também aos governos nacionais, para que todos eles se envolvam na resposta que é preciso dar, porque é urgente por fim à política genocida de Israel, é urgente por fim ao massacre do povo palestino e à escalada de guerra de Israel no Médio Oriente, é urgente garantir o respeito pelos direitos do povo palestino, como determinam as resoluções das Nações Unidas, designadamente com a concretização do Estado palestiniano nas fronteiras de 1967. Aquilo a que estamos a assistir de há um ano a esta parte, que não é novo, que já vinha de trás e que continua a acontecer aos olhos da comunidade internacional sem qualquer perspectiva de poder ser travado no imediato, é o resultado de uma política genocida que o Governo de Israel está a levar por diante com a cumplicidade e o apoio dos Estados Unidos, mas também da União Europeia. A União Europeia tem sido cúmplice das medidas, das políticas genocidas de Israel, reconhecidas como tal pelo Tribunal Internacional de Justiça, tem sido cúmplice do massacre do povo palestiniano, tem sido cúmplice das violações do direito internacional, tem sido cúmplice de uma escalada da guerra que, se não for travada, pode ter, pode ter consequências ainda mais devastadoras. E o que se exige neste momento mais do que os discursos e a afirmação das posições políticas de cada uma das instituições, é a ação concreta. São medidas que permitam efetivamente 
Por fim, essas políticas genocidas de Israel, medidas como a suspensão do acordo de associação entre a União Europeia e Israel, medidas como o fim do financiamento a programas militares de Israel, como acontece com o programa Horizonte da União Europeia, medidas que travem o envio de armas para Israel para que o povo palestiniano seja massacrado em Gaza ou reprimido e oprimido na Cisjordânia. O que se exige é o respeito pelo direito internacional, pela Carta das Nações Unidas e pelas resoluções das Nações, das Nações Unidas que apontam a solução de paz e de respeito pelos direitos do povo palestiniano. Vladimir Preberlich. Well, uh, I think I'm the last one or on the end of, of this, this debate. I'm really proud to be today with you. Unfortunately, I think 720 people should stand here today, not only a few of us. And I call upon all those who are not decided yet that there is a high time. Let's work again to you know, bring them here. And this is a really good opportunity for all of us to send three messages from the European Union on behalf of the European Parliament. Number one. This should not happen. Ceasefire should happen tomorrow. The violence should stop immediately because violation of human rights, international law, should not take place. It is, it's, it is taking place right now. This is not okay. It should be sent there. The second thing is Palestinians should have the right of a state. Let's support them in that way. Only from this perspective, we can have a debate between two states, Israel and Palestine. So what are we waiting for? There is no time for, for waiting for this one. The third one, Israel should be sanctioned immediately, right now. Why? Because they are violating the human rights. They are violating the international law. And final sentence is very important. For all those who are perpetrators of the misdoings or misbehavings, they should take consequences. And we are here to do that for them. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Leona, Leo Luca Orlando. Hi. <coughs> Probably to communicate. Only two persons. Here, no, they can finish, okay? Only to communicate. Ah, I can speak in Italian. Uh, soltanto per <laughs> comunicare la mia posizione, forse è sufficiente che mi presenti. Per 22 anni sono stato sindaco di Palermo e nel mio ufficio, nell'ufficio del sindaco, vi era la bandiera della Palestina e la bandiera di Israele. Io ho un grande rispetto per il popolo ebraico, ma sono legato da sempre, e Palermo è gemellata con Canunis e con Bethlehem. Ho dato la cittadinanza onoraria di Palermo a Barguti ed ero normalmente ospite di Arafat a Ramallah e a, a, a Gaza. Siamo gemellati con Caniunis e, e siamo convinti che dobbiamo avere rispetto per il popolo ebraico, dobbiamo riconoscere il diritto di Israele di esistere, ma dobbiamo dire con grande chiarezza che il governo di Netanyahu è antidemocratico e responsabile di crimini di guerra. Dobbiamo dire con grande chiarezza che il governo di Netanyahu è il peggior nemico del popolo ebraico nel mondo, del popolo ebraico nel mondo perché sta diffondendo rabbia e odio nei confronti del popolo ebreo nel mondo. Ecco la ragione per la quale io credo che sia necessario che si applicano le sanzioni nei confronti di Netanyahu, ecco perché credo sia necessario che si sospenda l'invio di armi a Israele, così come credo sia necessario avviare le procedure per le sanzioni e l'embargo a carico di Israele. Non capisco per quale ragione la Russia di Putin è considerata un paese invasore e Israele di Netanyahu non è, è considerato invece un paese da sostenere con le armi. Questo scandalo deve finire, credo che sia il modo migliore per manifestare concretamente il nostro sostegno alle Nazioni Unite. Non è possibile che un antidemocratico come Netanyahu dichiari che il segretario generale delle Nazioni Unite non è gradito in terra di Israele, una vergogna. Dovrebbe vergognarsi per quello che afferma, perché uno che parla così non merita certamente di essere considerato un soggetto che opera per la pace. Ecco la ragione per la quale noi siamo qui, fortemente schierati, e sosteniamo fino in fondo le Nazioni Unite, perché l'unica nostra speranza è un intervento delle Nazioni Unite, perché l'attuale intervento delle Nazioni Unite ovviamente non è sufficiente. Viva la Palestina, viva Israele e viva la pace. Carola Raquete, and the last one is Agius Saliva, and the other colleagues, you can come here with him. Yeah. 
In these days, we are commemorating thousands of victims of war and terror, and we have witnessed many war crimes, which I think in the eyes of history, I think everyone will recognize as genocide. I personally grieve with everyone who has lost friends and family in the last year, no matter who it is. It's been decades that people in Gaza and the West Bank are suffering from occupation and bombardments, but the terrible attack of Hamas on October 7 and the erection of Israel have led to an escalation of violence, I have to admit personally, I didn't think was possible one year ago. To stop this escalation, clearly, all European governments must immediately stop arms exports and support for Benjamin Netanyahu's government and urgently push for a ceasefire right now, but also for release of the hostages and a permanent end to occupation. Everyone in this region deserves to live in peace, that's true, but lasting peace requires justice, freedom and self-determination for the Palestinian people. And the last one, and we can do the photo together out, uh, Agio Saliba. Thanks for this opportunity. I think that we are here today because we want to see a more courageous European Parliament when it comes to what is happening in the Gaza, in the Gaza Strip. And call it by its name. This is a genocide, nothing less than a genocide, and therefore we should not um, throw, continue to throw this problem uh, under, under the floor. Therefore, we are calling, first of all, for a ceasefire. We are calling for a termination uh, or, and the suspension of the um, agreement between the European Union and Israel for an arms embargo and for peace and de-escalation in the Middle East. Ultimately, we have seen more than enough when it comes to deaths of innocent people, of women, of children, more than 42,000, more than 93,000 injured uh, during the past year. And therefore, I think uh, it's now, not tomorrow, that we should and we must have a ceasefire in the region and a de-escalation of the conflict which is spreading like, like wild, wildfire. But the Parliament has to be more forceful when it comes to the condemnation to the Israeli government, to Netanyahu and the Israeli army. This is totally unacceptable and totally inhumane. Thank you. We thank also Katarina Martins that could be, not be here and also Mr. Atash that uh, cannot speak by, by the time, but we can have a photo together calling for the ceasefire, calling for the voice of the parliament and calling for the sanctions to Israel for this genocide.